we surveyed 5,000 people at Pixar, Lucasfilms, Marvel, ESPN, Imaginary. We asked them what were the barriers to being more innovative and creative at work. We found five. None of them will be unfamiliar to you. Time. I don't have time to think. Still considered the biggest barrier to innovation. If I look at your diaries for tomorrow, I know what they look like. They look like the barcode on the packet of cereal. They're completely full. And we hear ourselves say, I don't have time to think. Risk aversion, I have quarterly results to meet. From 1910 to 2010, pretty much nothing changed. Wall Street was born, we had quarterly results. Yeah, the internet came along, but we're still driven by quarterly results. <laughs> so we're risk averse, because we've got our quarterly results to meet. Anybody who believes that quarterly results are more important than purpose will be gone in less than a decade, and I don't care how big you are today. You will be gone. There are three or four things coming in the next decade which I believe make this the most exciting, the most terrifying decade of certainly my life, the most disruptive decade of my life. Artificial intelligence, scheduled to be, I think, thousands of times more intelligent than the human race by 2030. Um, 3D printing, they reckon we'll print houses on a 3D printer for under $5,000 15 years from today. What, that, what will that do to the realty market? But think about purpose over profit. Because you've got artificial intelligence coming, you've got 3D printing coming, we've got product-centric, we build it, they will come cultures, run by people who remember the days of quarterly results, who can't give it up. You ask if they're consumer-centric, they put their hand up. You ask if they've spent a day in the living room of one of their consumers, and they can't put their hand up. These people will be gone in less than a decade, because they believe quarterly results is more important than purpose. I'll give you a very tangible example of why I think they're wrong. I was asked recently to go and give a talk to the world's number one tool company. They make more ha hammers, chisels, and saws than everybody else. I know nothing about the tool industry, so I thought, how could I find out what was important to their consumers? So I went down to Home Depot and Lowe's, the big DIY stores in Florida, and I listened to that generation as they chose their tools. And I went back to talk to this company, the world's leading brand of tools, and I said, this generation doesn't even know who you are. They didn't care. What they cared about was what was important to them. We're going to build our dream living room, our dream house, our dream kitchen. You could be the brand who helps people build their dreams. And you could see it straight there. Oh, that's not going to help drive quarterly results. Their definition of innovation right now isn't. It's iteration. We're going to saturate Mexico and India because they've got a growing middle class. What this company has failed to realize is India and Mexico will by bypass their tools just as India bypassed computers. They went straight to mobile phones. We're printing houses in Houston, Texas today on a 3D printer. They're printing hearts in Hyderabad, India today on a 3D printer so the surgeon can see the heart before they go in. Amazon spent billions of dollars on shipping last year. Think about production and storage. I estimate that somewhere between 10 and 15 years from today, at least 30% of what you buy on Amazon uh, today online, you will print at home. That chair, you'll print it at home. The, co the big table, you'll have to go to your local printers because your printer won't be big enough. If you can print anything you want on demand 15 years from today, what will you use a hammer, a chisel, or a saw for? No. They'll be in the Smithsonian Museum next to my son's Buzz Lightyear. Purpose over profit. Not only will they not buy your products and services if they don't believe in what you stand for, they don't want to work for you either. Why do you think so many people are becoming entrepreneurs? They don't trust the big corporations. Consumer insight underused was the fourth one. The fifth one was um, we, nobody had the same definition of innovation and creativity, so we created one. The habit of continually doing things in new ways to make a positive difference to our working lives. Not the best definition, but one. And when you're trying to drive cultural change, one definition is important. The habit of continually doing things in new ways to make a positive difference to our working lives. What one word in that definition stands out for you? Continually, habit. It's about making it a habit. Can I invite you just for a moment to fold your arms? Now I invite you to fold them the other way. Okay. If it still feels comfortable, I promise you you're doing it wrong. So how does that feel? Awkward. Whose arms are they anyway? They feel like dead people's arms, don't they? <laughs> um, you can let them go. It's okay. Science of your brain says if you fold and unfold your arms 30 times in succession the wrong way, three days in a row, you will rewire your brain to fold your arms the other way. But that's not what's important. It felt awkward. That's how innovation feels. 